All right, so we got Daniel here, and we got a shipment of discus. What Set. type of discus? Um, there's a couple of world exclusives, some unique strains, um, some reds, yellows, uh, some turquoise as well. So a nice wide variety of fish. Awesome. So yeah, we're gonna take these into his fish room and we're gonna open them up. So very excited. All right, so we're in Daniel's fish room and he's just getting sorted uh, before we show you guys what's going on. He's also gonna show you guys how he bags his discus fish. So. Very, very informative video I think this one is going to be, so that's great. As you can see behind me, I'll give you a better look. We have some really great quality discus. We have some really cool angels down below, some goldfish, and even some oscars. But um, we'll show you guys that now, and then when Daniel gets back, we'll do some really fun unboxing stuff. It's going to be a, good, it's going to be a great video, actually. So let's get started. All right, so you can see here, some beautiful smaller discus and um, these are really great quality fish you can see how perky they are and how um, colorful they are and these are only young fish so that's that's really great to see um, Daniel worms his fish regularly feeds them really great quality food so he makes his own food um, it's the green stuff on the bottom there so that's probably from spirulina or something that he's using in the food to make it green spinach or something and yes there's some beautiful fish in here you can see he has a beautiful pair here and I think these are called tiger toques is that right Daniel tiger toques yeah ones? they're tiger toques right. uh, there's two types in there uh, yep. the one you're looking at now is from four and hut yep um, and then the other one is from jagger discus okay so jaggers from Indonesia and then cores from Malaysia all right cool very beautiful pair and then I'm going to show them the goldfish. Yeah. So here we have some chunky goldfish. Uh, can you tell us anything about them, Daniel? Um, so these are all imported. They're from um, China, I believe. And so you got Yayo Bunarandas, and then you get yep. a nice ranch, you tiger ranch. Yeah. So very nice. Um, we are getting other ones in, um, but until these ones move, I won't be getting them. There'll be more coming in. Yeah. I just got to make room for them. Yep, and um, yeah, so there's quite a re like really really good stock here of goldfish. Um, I will have Daniel's link in the bio if you are looking at this goldfish's face and thinking I really need that in my aquarium. Um, they're honestly just the cutest things. They're just so fat and chunky. Hey Daniel. They're absolutely chunky. They love their food as well. Yeah, I can imagine. All right, so now we're gonna move on to. The angelfish. So, what type of angels are these, Daniel? Um, so they're they were bred by me. They're um, black koi angels crossed yep. with a. Uh, what the name of the fish? Like almost not a blue sapphire, but um, a, another pretty much black, but it had like a blue sheen to it. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, they were bred by me. Um, and are these also for sale? Yeah, they are. They're six dollars each. Oh, that's um, that's pretty good. Okay, so if you guys want some angelfish and you like the look of these, um, head to to the link and some of them have really nice colouring on them. Yeah, well hopefully some of the darker ones get more of a blue sheen through them. Yeah, um, yeah. Some of them do have a blue sheen but it's very faint. Yeah, um, some of them are really dark. I'll, I'll send you the photo of the um, parents. Alright, cool. So if you guys are keen and you want to see pictures of the parents, I'll have those to send you and and yeah, or you could just contact Daniel directly. All right, so what's next? I think this tank here is Daniel's big community tank. Yep, right. so this is um, the display tank for people to pick from as well. Yep. Um, there's a nice wide variety um, in here. So like there's some tiger pigeons, yellow stardust, albino malbro, um, turquoise, yellow pigeons, or yellow jaguars, Bolts, you yep. name it, everything's pretty much in here. And can you tell us a little bit about these guys? So they're a white Heckley eyes. Yep. Um, very hard to find and come by. Yep. Um, they're part of the Geophagus line, um, but they're absolutely stunning, very hard to find. Yeah. Especially these albino ones, hey? Yeah. Yep. Um, very hard. Not many people have them. Um, if they have them, they're very hard to breed in a way. Some people have had success. Yep. Um, but you find very few on the market and once they come they usually sell pretty quickly. Okay. 
I'd love to give it a go, but yeah, it's still very hard to find them. I was just telling Daniel, I found a really nice pair at the Gold Coast when I was there at the fish room. $120 for two fully grown, um, a fully grown pair, and I'm pinching myself now that I didn't get them, but it just means I have to focus more on rams, I think. Yeah. Alrighty, so, what are we doing now? So I'm going to show Justin how I bag a fish up, ready for shipping. Yep. Um, and then after bagging this fish up, we're going to get straight into the unboxing. Uh, sure. a lot of these fish are waiting to get into their tanks. So yep. whilst we're um, bagging the fish up, I'm going to drain a couple of the tanks as well. So we get the water down nice and low. Yep. So we can throw the fish in straight away and then acclimate them slowly uh, in the way that I prefer. I know it's not for everyone, um, but each person can acclimate their fish their own way. Um, and I guess the way one... we do it. Yeah, and I guess one good thing to mention is these guys have come all the way from overseas, gone into a quarantine facility yep. already, so they've already been quarantined, Yeah. and now they're going into your tanks where they'll be further quarantined and sold off. Yeah, so the way that uh, we work, these came in from Indonesia and Malaysia, they go down to Sydney where they get quarantined before they hit Oz Discus. After they hit Oz Discus, uh, they spend a couple of days there um, where we get to select them, and then after we select them, they get shipped out to us. Uh, and then these shipments get go into their own tanks um, for two weeks. Okay. So they get to sit in their own tank for two weeks, and yep. after they've sat in their tank for two weeks, that's when I start to move them and uh, integrate them with the other fish. Yeah. Uh, just to keep ensure that if they do bring anything in, highly doubt they will. But if anything does go wrong, I, I'm only treating one tank and not a wide variety of tanks. Yep. Um, and that that's the main thing. Okay. Awesome. So let's let's get this bagging done, and then yeah. Sweet. Let's get into it. I actually just wanted to have a look at these, they're beautiful. What are these? Are these platinums of some sort? Yeah, albino platinums from Robert Lim. Beautiful. Again guys, if you're keen on some of these, check out the link below. Some nice discus here. Alright. Hold on, I just gotta grab the tape gun. No worries. Alright, Daniel. Um, so yeah, at the moment I've gotten a heat pack, so I use a 40 hour heat pack. Yep. Um, stick it to the lid. Um, depending on the size of the box and uh, where's it going to, I will use a second one. Like if it's a big box with six bags in it, I'll use a, another one. Yep. And I'll stick it in with the bags. Um, and then, but as this is only going to uh, Rockhampton, probably should double check where it's going. Um, only needs one. All right. Because. When I ship it to ship with Tolp, um, it's overnight airport to airport, and so it's arrives the next morning. Yeah. Uh, in the base of the box, I put a layer of um, newspaper just in case. Um, yeah. But you just really need to listen to what your airline's asking for or who you're uh, shipping for, uh, shipping with ask for. Um, so with Tolp, they require another layer of bag underneath. So there'll be three layers for the discus, um, and then there'll be an extra layer outside to yeah. just hold the water in case anything goes wrong. Um, and then we seal it up, ready yep. to go. And you've got to remember, like, discus are cichlid, so you can see on the dorsal fin there, there's some spines. And I'm sure, have you had a case where that has punctured at least one layer of bag? Um, yeah, so the reason we use three layers, well, the way we do it is there's three layers and then a layer of newspaper. So yep. two layers on the outside, yep. layer on the inside, and then we're gonna stick a layer of newspaper inside. So if the discus decides to puncture a hole in the first layer, yep. the newspaper absorbs it and acts like a little clock um, to slow down the water leakage. Okay. Um, saying that, sometimes they puncture, sometimes they don't. It all depends on the discus and how stressed out or sporadic it wants to be really. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so lots of newspaper is a must. Yeah, a lot of newspaper, um, <laughs> because it all depends on how you want to ship it. Yep. Newspaper is great. Um, yep. So my customers know that I use newspaper and shredded paper for insulation. Yeah. And the shredded paper is actually really good for tucking in the side of the bag just to, to yep. really pack it in. Um, so to save weight for us, we don't use shredded paper, mm. we use an extra bag. Yep. Um, the extra bags are just like a another 
sponge really. So yeah. That's fair enough. Especially yeah. for a large space um, yep. that might be left over. Yeah. It's great. All right, um, cool. And so you're putting that inside that bag? Yeah, so I've got two layers here. Newspaper's going to slide on in. Yep. And then I'll grab my third layer or my inside layer. Yep. And then I'll slide it in between the newspaper. Okay. Um, depending on the bag, like some people might say that's too much newspaper to hide the fish. Yep. Um, but I just cut it. All right. What it, I just cut it to fit. If the newspaper covers it all, great. Yep. It just makes the fish more in the dark. Um, but for larger bags, that size of newspaper will only cover the bottom half of it. Alright, cool. So, to be honest, as long as the bottom's covered or the water section's covered, yep. you, you'll be fine. So, once we've set this up, we then have to go catch our fish. Alright, sounds good. Alright, so we're here with the bag in a bucket and a jug. Yep, so this water here is fresh water. Yep. Brand new tank water this morning. Okay. Dechlorinized, ready to go up a tent that I needed it. Yep. Um, and so that allows me to just put the fish in straight away. Yep. Um, saves me going to the tap, then dechlorinating the water, and then putting the fish in. Um, cool. The fish uh, water's already at temp, ready yep. to go. And so once uh, I've got water in the bag, put it over to the side. And now to catch out the fish that the customer wants. All right. Let's see. Let's see who the lucky person is. I know exactly who it is. <laughs> Just whether or not they want to play ball. Yeah. Uh, I need to grab a net. Lucky discus, I should have said, hey. Yeah, well, the person's lucky. They get it. Yep. Alright. Let's see. Alrighty. It is that ring leopard in the middle. Ah, oh, very nice. It's a nice blue red dot, nice lines and stunning rim. Can we have things. a look at that one? Oh, that's beautiful. Alright, have fun at your new home, buddy. It's going to love its flight. Right. Straight into the bucket. Yep. And so, what we do, which is different to every other store, we take photos of our fish. Um, so, I just, depending on what day it is, Yep. And how bright the sun is. Yep. Was at the moment. <laughs> at the moment, it looks a bit threatening with like a storm or something. Yeah. So, um, could you pass me my phone? It's behind. Oh uh, yep. Right. Cheers. So, since it's um, cloudy outside, we're just going to use a stand shop light. This is just a white light. Yep. Make sure you wet your hand before touching the fish. Yep. Grab the fish. Take the photo. Yep. That's good. done. And then we grab our fish. Yep. So using our, uh, our hands is actually safer yep. and it does less damage to the slime coat on the fish. Yep, because nets are pretty abrasive hey, on, the, yeah, on the slime Yeah, um, we use a very fine net, but even that, like they can still get their dorsal spike stuck in it. So yep. it's safer to use our hands. Um, the only time we've got to use our net is when we are catching them. Yep, all right, cool. Um, and plus with goldfish, we just catch with our hands. It makes right, it so cool. much easier. Yeah, yep, so we're here with the oxygen tank. Yep. So I put my uh, the nozzle in, and then I just let some air into it to oxygenate the air before I should bag it up. Yep. Um, just to give the fish some more oxygen. Yep. To make sure I put the right amount of water in it, I bring it up. Have a look. You want to have enough water to air ratio. So that's pretty much smack bang on. All right. Uh, Hopefully, I got inside the bag. I'll actually <laughs> put a little bit more in. <coughs> And so how long will that be in transit, just to let the audience know? Uh, so once it's bagged up, um, so lots of time now, almost 9 o'clock, 9.30. 9 yep. So by the time I go to the airport this afternoon, or by midday, um, so it'll be back for almost three hours. And then it should land in at the destination Yep. by 7 a.m. the next morning. Okay, it's not too bad. So. 12, uh, 24 hours, yeah, tops. Um, but the heat pack lasts up to 48 hours. I mean, 40 hours, and there's yeah. enough oxygen in the bag to last 40 hours as well. All right, nice and inflated.
And how many rubber bands do you usually use? Um, two. Well, two. depending. So for this layer, I'll use one. I use one per layer. Yep. If the rubber band breaks halfway through and it's still stuck there, I'll put another rubber band on top. Yep. Um, to see it, keep it nice and tight and sealed up. But usually it's just one. Yeah. I don't really have an issue with rubber bands breaking. Yeah. But for each layer, I got to one rubber band. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get very paranoid, so I do. I do three on the inside yeah. and then two on the outside layer. So just to make sure. So these are a, a thinish bag. Yeah. Um, so like if you feel that one, it's quite thin. Yeah. It's pretty Compared thin. to a um, this bag here. Which is, oh, yeah. will be the future bag, next lot of bags. Yeah. This is quite thicker, so I'll use two on that. All right. But for a thinner bag, you only really need one. Yep. Um, well, I only use one. All right, so you got a bit of a twisting action there. Then you yeah. fold the top over. So I will loop the rubber band around. Yep. And so on the first one, I bent it over. This yep. one, I'll spin it around. Then I'll bend it over. Yep. Just remember which way you spin. And on the last layer, another completely different way. Yep. Do you make sure you trap a little bit of air in there as well? What, between layers? Yeah. No, you... not really. I yep. try and squeeze it all out. Okay. Um, just to make that like seal kind of yeah. thing. Yep. Because if like if a, if it gets punctured or anything, I want to have it nice and tight. Yeah. Um. Because it, when it ships, it will deflate slightly. Yeah. Um. The rubber band dance. Yep. All fish breeders know that dance. I'm looking forward to when I finish these bags, but that's ready to go. Cool. Smack bag. Perfect. Um, and for toll, since I'm shipping toll, Qantas, I mean, Qantas doesn't ship uh, uh, animals. Yeah. Uh, Virgin does. Yeah. So for them, Virgin has all their requirements online um, for shipping. They require an external bag. Yeah. So. As a file external bag, it's just a little shopping bag. Yep, and is the black strategic for keeping the fish calm or? No, the black is just, because I have a black. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, if you, once we open up the shipment, you'll see that the bags are usually clear. Yep. Um, and that's what they use. Yep. You know, it just has to be an out, outer layer bag, really. Yeah. Just in case, like a styrofoam, like, breaks or something like that. There's no water leaking into the aeroplane or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. And obviously it's just a precautionary thing. Yep. Pretty much. All right, cool. So that's bagged up. Yeah. Into the box it goes. Yeah. So depending on which way I want it, I can either sit it up way, that way. Yep. Otherwise I'll sit it this way. Yeah. And then I'll sit it this way. So nice and sitting upright. Sit it in. Yep. And then I'll get a, another bit of bag and just fill it up, or some peanuts if I've got some lying around. Yep. Fill it all in and then seal it all up. And before I seal it up, I've actually got to get the invoice and all that sort of stuff done. Yep. And right. toll stuff. But that's pretty much our uh, boxing process. Oh, very nice. Okay, cool. So that's the shipping info. Yep. And thank you so much, Daniel. I'm that's sure good. a lot of our viewers are very happy with that because. I think a lot of you guys breed rams, discus, plecos, those sort of things. All the really good fish in our hobby. And um, yeah, very useful information, so thank you so much. Yeah, but as I said, you just got to listen to the airline that you're going to ship through. Yep. Uh, each one has their own rules and regulations. So yep. just, just follow them, and just, as long as you follow it, you're good, good as gold. And then obviously, with you guys being from all around the world, uh, also follow your local regulations as well. Yeah, the um, certain things. Tasmania, Western Australia, and Northern Territory yep. uh, all have regulations for importing. So yep. 
Yep. And uh, then obviously in the US and Canada and South Africa and all those places, you guys will also probably have regulations. I don't know about South Africa, but probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. So easy. Cool. All right. So Daniel's given me the very important task of opening the first box. So let's try not to cut any viscous. No, we won't. Um, So, do we open this up? Yep, pop it open. Right. This is the fun part, actually. Oh, actually, I'll go get that later. That's Sorry. a good. <laughs> oh, guess what, Daniel? What? It's Christmas. It's always it's Christmas. Christmas. Sweet, I needed that. <laughs> so, how do you do this? Do you just set it up here? Yeah, so, um, the way we'll do it is we'll grab a bucket, and yep. then you can just stick the bag in the bucket. So, we yep. usually get two in a bag. I mean, two right. in a bucket. Yep. Two so bags in a bucket. Two bags in a bucket. All right. So, but at least it gives you just two ready to go. Yep. And then we find a tank. So I don't know what they are. Okay. That, um, and That's then, the exciting part. Yeah, it is. So you get to pop pop the bag open, and then right. depending on which strain it is, we'll stick it in the box. I mean, a right. tank. Let's put the rubber bands in there. Yeah. Use a bag very very well. Yeah. And these bags are pretty strong. Mm. And then for the third bag, I just pull it straight out. Yep. So that's our white butterfly. Yep. He, he's punctured the uh, hole in the bag, so it doesn't really matter. But he's going in this tank okay. right there. So yeah, just pop the um, lid open. Yep. And then wet my hands. And wet your hands and then grab him or her. And then we'll throw him straight in the tank. I don't know why I do this, but I always cover a discus face when I'm holding them. So that's a beautiful fish mm. there. And let it have a little splash out. Yep. All right. Yeah, I'll take that. So these haven't been sold yet? So the white butterflies have. They're off yep. to Cairns next week. Oh, okay. Um, Big journey. Yeah, so they got, I got four going off and then the two in the end tank are also going to Cairns as well. Okay, cool. So unfortunately guys, you can't buy these ones, but there might be some here for sale, I'm sure. Yeah, they're not white butterflies, but we'll have something. Yeah, um, this one looks like it could be a platinum. Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, the, the, the white on them is absolutely stunning. Yeah. This one's pretty chill. It's beautiful. Oh. Cool. Actually, you're right, that was an albino yeah, plant. Two more, I'll grab you another bucket. Yep. One in each? Yeah, and then put the second one on whichever one you want. Cool. Box one done, seven to go. I mean, six to go. This is the fun part of the job, surely. Oh, absolutely. Like, like, like every time. You, is this like Christmas? Oh, it absolutely is like Christmas. Oh, that's good. See, I wish I could do this with Rams, <laughs> but instead I just breed my own. See, I send them to my customers, but, maybe, but I can't be there with my customers when they open them. Maybe you, when you send them to me, you can come and unbox them and then you can enjoy it. Alright, deal. Deal. I'll be there. I'll, I'll come and watch. Do so, that is our yellow stardust. Yeah. Um, that one is going in this white tank here. Alright. So, so you I'm might need a use... step. Turquoise around the fin? Yeah, so the Stardust is based off a of snow leopard gene. Yeah. It's absolutely stunning. Well, this guy's five feet. Yeah. Alright. So I might have to. Alright, so that's beautiful. Mm. That is beautiful. Wow. So Justin's just unboxed an albino blue diamond. Uh, it's commonly known in the industry as an albino platinum. But the person who bred him was actually the late Yap Wing Kong. Um, he unfortunately passed away, so his brother is now taking over, Yap Wen Wee. 
Um, so the family uses the albino blue diamond name, so we're going to keep it as that. Um, but yeah, most commonly known as albino platinums nowadays. It's a beautiful fish, hey? Oh, it is. It's stunning. Yeah. All the fish are beautiful. I always yeah. say that. It's like, it sounds like a broken record, but it's true. Guys, this is only one box, and there's seven in total. That's insane. Okay, so, so this one's going up there as yeah, well. Yeah, with the other uh, yellow starters. Cool. I've got to make sure now. Got to, got to keep to the system a bit. Yeah, once you figure out the way of doing it, it's like you understand how to quickly do it. That's beautiful. It is. And each one's like slightly different. Like yeah. slightly different turquoise spangling, like that sort of stuff. It's so cool to see that. Well, w when you see the red stardust versus the yellow stardust, yeah. you'll still get the facial patterning and the markings in the fin. Okay. So the snow leopard, so the red stardust and the yellow stardust are based off the snow leopard gene. So if yeah. you've seen the snow leopard with the markings on the face, yeah. that's it there. Wow. So it so doesn't nice. pepper. That's um, so good. So because, yeah, for those of you who don't know, like, yeah, those lighter colored discus, if you put them in a dark setup, they'll just go black almost with the peppering. Mm. So, yeah, that's cool. I love that guy down there. He is so nice. The white stardust? Yeah. Um, I'll move that albi albino platinum, but, yeah, they're looking stunning. That's so nice. All right, cool. Box two. Yeah, let's do it. All right, Daniel, so tell us what you got there. Uh, so we went digging through the boxes to find these. These are a world exclusive. Um, these are actually bred from the late Yatwen Kong, uh, now owned by Yatwen Wee. Uh, this one here is a Kieran eruption. So first time being uh, out in the world, straight to Australia. So that is a beautiful fish. Nice stunning dots, nice round shape. Yep. So. Um, that's good. There's only two of these, male and female, nice yep. reserves. Um, All the fish look really great. Yeah. Alright, let's see. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. nice. And then the next one, because Justin's got to, Justin's got to do one. <laughs> um, can't let him come and not do one. So this one here is a world exclusive Kieran Leopard. Alright guys, so you're seeing these for the first time? Yeah, first time. I, I posted the photo in hand photos onto the members group. Yeah. Um, so some of the my members have all seen it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Right, and you can see how these guys have already poked up quite a bit. Yeah. Because that's not poked a hole, but this is a Kieran Leopard. Wow. So more lines. Yep. Stunning shape. The patterns uh, on that are this really one. Nice. Yeah, I think so. Well maybe I've done both Kieran and Eruptions. Okay. I will find out once they're in the tank. <laughs> Still stunning shape, stunning Beautiful. colour. Alright. Yeah, they're just gonna settle in there. Yeah, so um let's have a look. You can really see and appreciate that colour. I love the patterns on the forehead. Because yeah. sometimes you don't get the pattern, like really no. good patterning on the head. So the, the other fish that's in here is the uh, Bukart Secure Leopard Snake Skin that we opened off camera, which is yeah. at the back. Yeah, so we had to open that one and put it in. But yeah, both, all, right. all stunning. Cool. Let's do cool. the next one. Alright, so Daniel, can you tell us what is in here? Um, so in there is two world exclusives, either Kieran's or Leopard's. Um, right. I have to match them up, but the it is a going. yeah in the blue tank. So but that, but they're going to be stunning regardless. Yeah. Um, if we look at the, if you hold the fish with the head in its in your left hand with the right hand side of the body looking up, I'll yep. be able to tell which strand it is because one has a little marking on the body. So that one is a Kieran Leopard. That is beautiful. That's a thick fish. It is. Nice mosaic blue colour. Yep. Um, stunning fish. I love the fat, uh, facial patterns as well. Yeah, that's nice. That's a that's a stunning female as well. That's a female? Yeah. Wow. And these are already sold? 
Uh, that one hasn't. Okay, so guys, go get some discus. Alright, so let's see if I can do this. Like that? Yep. Perfect. Perfect. That is a beautiful fish. Mm. Once it settles in, it'll it'll start to open up even more. Oh, look at the face on that. The facial patterning is yeah. pristine. I love the blue through it as well. Yep. It just makes, like for a Kieran jean, usually Kieran is a bit more red, but that much blue through it is absolutely phenomenal. Can you explain the jeans on this fish just quickly? Not really. It's kind of hard because we don't know what the breed are crossed with. All we know is yeah. that it is a Kieran, uh, Kieran leopard. Okay. Uh, but we don't know how he got to it. Yeah, no, just... that's fair enough. So if you guys have any discus projects coming up, Brisbane Discus, that's the name. Um, in case you don't see the link below. So you can look up brisbanediscus.com.au. Yep. And you'll be able to find them on the internet. Yeah, so today's the day of me going through and putting all these fish up online. Yep. And unfortunately for our overseas customers, you won't be able to get discus, but for all who are in Australia, yep. you guys are fair game. Yeah, so um, there's reps all around Australia. So Oz Discus does Sydney and Melbourne. Um, then there's Fish Haven Australia. They do Adelaide. And then there's Perth Discus in uh, Western Australia. Yeah, so that's the Kieran Leopard. That is beautiful. All right, let's get him in. So yeah, that one is the Kieran Leopard. We, he, there's a little bit of a um, marking damage on this side, oh, that side of the fish, but you can see see the panning. Oh yeah, yeah. So that one I know is a Kieran Leopard male, and then the other two that I did are the eruptions. So. So these guys here. Yeah. Yep. They're a lot more red. Yeah. Of increase. Finer pattern. spots. Yep. So. Yep. But. Wow, that uh, is awesome. Yeah. Next one? Time lapse? Let's do a time lapse because yeah. there's so many to get through. Um, and then we'll just show everything at the end. Sweet. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. Right. So, Daniel. Yeah. You're going to have to run us through every single fish in this tank and tell us challenge accepted yeah tell us everything alrighty so uh, we'll start off with the red stardust so there's one there and then there's one there it's a bit fainted but he'll color up eventually yeah uh, that one's from Jaga so okay. Indonesian then we've got our lovely red star, uh, red melon oh, not red melon red gold diamond I love this fish the red is just so intense yeah lovely fish um, from Jaga as well it's like, a big, it's like a big rose petal. Yeah. Oh, it's stunning. Um, that's a female. Stunning wow. female as well. Beautiful. Uh, this is a yellow checkerboard. Yep. I mean, not yellow checkerboard, red checkerboard um, from Jagger. Yep. Perfect. Love and it. One thing um, I was talking to Daniel about is the purple, like on the, the top and the bottom, and a bit on the head as well, which is, is that pretty unique? It is unique, I've never really said it, um, yeah. but it all comes down to how people view it as well. Each people have their own way of seeing colours. Yeah. Um, so really like cool. for me, it might turn out to be more of a blue. Yeah, because I guess they've just been put in here yeah. as well, yeah. So. Um, but it's really hard to tell, like some people see colours differently. Um, yeah. So my blue might be someone else's purple. Yeah. But saying that, I can see it slightly, which is cool. Yeah. But saying that, it's a checkerboard gene, but it's a jaguar. That's cool. So um, jaguar, you can see a spot there. Yeah. Dots through it. Yep. Uh, we've got another jaguar here, so more of a white with little red coming through it. Yep. So completely different to the other one. So that one is a female, I'm pretty sure, and that's the male. This one's a thicker red barring. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Perfect. Nice fine red lines as well. Yep. Then we've got uh, RGD as well. This one here. So an RGD stands for red gold diamond. Okay. So same as the um, full red. This one just doesn't have much red on the face. The same as that one. Oh, <laughs> but you can see there the head is like more yellow. If yeah. You can. Well, the red yep, gold diamond we has a gold face. 
Yep. So very unique. So it's more of a yellowy base. Okay. And can you tell us more about this guy? He's really unique. So that's a yellow tiger um, from Jagger as well. So yep. Indonesian. Uh, we they first came in quite large. There was only eight, and now we've got some small ones in, which is great. Yep. Um, perfect. So most people see red and blue tigers um, or white tigers. Uh, this one's a yellow, so based off the turquoise gene, white pepper. Yeah, you can see that. And then this one? Uh, that is the Supreme Tiger Jaguar Turquoise. <laughs> Not that one on the screen at the moment, but this one here, yeah. Um, so it's got a nice blue. Different. You'll see two more in the blue tank. Yeah. So completely different blue. Okay. Um, tiger patterning, but then it's also got the Jaguar dots. Yeah, so you can see that. So that's the reason it's getting that Jaguar name to it. This guy loves the camera. Oh. He, he's a showfish. You'd be annoying if you came home with me because you'd be trying to film other fish. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then the yellow stardust at the back behind everyone, oh, the yeah. solid yellows, they're from Jagger as well. Okay. A nice solid yellow, blue flecks through it. Going to be quite an interesting fish as well. Yeah, that's nice. Um, that's similar. Last time I was uh, having a look at albino alencas with Daniel and I called them yeah. mango slices. So yeah, albino alencas, slightly different. These aren't albino because yep. you can tell by the um, pupil, it's yeah. black instead of red. Yep, you can see that there. Mm. And this guy is just so annoying sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and then you've got your albino blue diamonds. So the white one, we've got one in this tank and one in the other tank. Yep, and you can see the pupil. No, nah, wrong one. Other uh, one. This one? Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you the albino blue diamond, also albino platinum. Yep. Um, and then that one's from Yap When We. Okay. And then this one beside the albino platinum is yep. an albino golden. So it will turn more yellow. Uh, just got to settle in. If I put it into a darker tank, we'll get more yellow through it. Yep, and I love um, the red on the actual thing. Yeah. So. so if we threw one into a blue tank, we'll get more red, more color through it. Um, and it'd definitely show more colors. Yep, that's beautiful, these fish. I love the, the platinums or the yeah. you know, dark, uh, blue diamonds, they're nice. They're, they're stunning, very unique, especially when they get a blue sheen through the halo as well. Yep. Very sought after with a blue halo. Um, uh, do you want to go to the bottom tank? Oh yeah, we can do that. So in this tank is pretty much everything that is being sold. Yep. Um, so we've got four albino platinums, I mean not albino platinums, four white butterflies. Yeah, so, so three white here, uh, three here and one at the back. Um, so yeah, these ones are it's a solid white um, butterflies. You can get ones with gold markings through the body. Yeah. Um, but these are all the white butterflies are based off the pigeon genetics. Yeah. So they can pepper, but these ones have very good strains. And this guy here? That is the yellow pigeon snake skin. Wow. The patterning um, on that is amazing. Yeah. And the yellow is very very intense. It is. It does. It's ve doing very well for being in a white tank. We usually get a bit more color out of a dark tank. Yeah. Um, because they want to blend in. So for that white and being so yellow, it's Stunning. The thing that does it for me with these fish is some of them have the red pectoral fins, yeah. which is like a really nice contrast. Oh, it is. It's, they're very unique in, the, in their own sense. Like the four white butterflies are from Jagger. Yeah. The yellow pigeon snakes are from, is from Jagger. Yeah. And then you've got in this tank four, I mean five? Five. You've got five smaller ones. Three yellow checkerboards and two red pigeon snake skins uh, from Robert Lim. Okay, cool. And so, those are still getting patterns? Yeah, still getting patterns. Still young. Um, they're still quite young, so we don't know what the finished pattern is going to look like, or yeah. what they're going to look like when they get older. But you know where they come from is good yeah. quality, so... Exactly. Probably very good. Oh, Absolutely. Good. All right, and which tank now? Blue? Last and final tank. Let's do this one. <clears throat> All right. So you can see the coloration between a couple of the fish in here. So like the albino platinum, yep. or white, you can see it better in this tank. Yeah. The yellow tigers look better. Like yes. there's a little bit more yellow in them because uh, they, they're blending into a dark. And the white in between it, you get a little bit of a metallic-y look through it, which yep. is that turquoise gene. And yeah, I love the eyes on these guys. Yeah. So nice. So I was just talking to Daniel, and the the four heads on these have such nice patterning, and that's what you look for in a really good quality discus right yeah it all depends on what strain you're chasing yeah. um, if you're chasing something that's going to be a high pattern strain you want patterning on their face yeah. uh, for something that's going to be a, a like a turquoise where you want more vertical lines for like a tiger turquoise you you want some lines on the head but majority you're chasing it for the patterning on the body with the tigers um, for the vertical lines like 
you can even see the colour difference between the Supreme Tiger Jaguar Turquoise in this tank versus the other tank. Yep. Um, dark colours and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and um, the, the patterning, oh my goodness. See, the forehead colour on a fish like this is just stunning. Yeah. If you'll let me show, but that is beautiful. It's almost like an Aztec kind of pattern to it, or something like that. Yeah, so there's, really cool. there's a couple of strands in here. Um, so we went over the yellow tigers, the albino platinums, or the albino blue diamonds. You've got your Capura X, so that wild cross one. Yeah, that's a nice looking um, fish. It's going to be a nice, nice stunning fish. More mm. brown base, bluey, blue sheen. Could have a heckle bug stays through it, we don't know. Yeah. Uh, we're waiting to find out. And this um, one? Super Sam Mara. Yep. Lovely blue black halo. Yeah. The nice bar down the front. And on the these guys, face. these guys are similar to the red covers. Yeah. So red cover is a version of a Super Sam Mara. Oh, okay. So cool. it's an offspring. Yeah. Um, but still stunning. The, the, what I love about the Sam Mara, you got a blue face, you got a nice black halo, and then you got a red trim on the top as well. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. And then you've got your Secure Leopard Snake Skins. Yeah, so this guy looks a bit different, hey? Yeah, so more dots. Um, I mean, they're leopards, sorry. So dots are larger, so there's three of them. One at the back, two there, and then the third one's over to the side. Yep. And then we've got our uh, Kieran Eruptions and Leopards okay. are the last ones. These are all very, very nice to see. So these are all for sale, too? Yeah, some of them were sold, um, but there's, there's plenty to choose from. Okay, cool. By the time people come through, they'll be listing of what's available. I'll be putting stuff up on what's available today on the website um, so that people can scroll through and have a look. Yep. And guys, if you like videos like this, like doing tours of um, really great establishments that um, kind of deal with really great quality fish, then give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. But, um, yeah, I'm gonna get Daniel to send me his his information, all of his Where's info. Um, there's exciting times ahead for Daniel. We're oh, not gonna big times. We're not gonna disclose what those are yet. Yeah, not I just think, yet. Um, but yeah, big things happening. Uh, getting ready for 2023. Um, yeah. 2023 is gonna be a big, big year, um, and I'm looking forward to it. So oh, there's, there's big things coming. That's awesome. All right, guys, so it's been a great time. So thank you so much, Daniel, for your time. It's always awesome to catch up with you. As always. Uh, Daniel's a really great friend. Um, we, actually, uh, we actually went to the same school, uh, yep. high school, which is really weird. Uh, we kind of did our own fish stuff at school, and we've only really become good mates after high school. Yeah. So interesting. Um, but yeah, if you guys like seeing more of Daniel's stuff, let me know in the comments down below. Tell me what you guys think. Um, also, give some praise to Daniel in the comments. Like, let him know how awesome his discus are, and his link will be in my bio, so in, in my description. So go check that out. Anything else you want to say? Nah, just bring on 2023. It's going to be a big year. Yep. You, you'll see me next year. Also, I right, need bigger and better plans. Sounds great. All right, guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. See you, everyone. See ya.